What's going on all you mentees? This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And today I get to talk about my top 10 must-reads, essential buys, recommended reads for the month of March of 2023. So let's get started. And welcome back everybody. Now before getting started, I always like to remind people that dates are subject to change. So anytime I recommend something for a particular month that could slide into another month then yeah you know that's just scheduling it happens but i still stand by my original suggestion so if i suggested something back in i don't know december of last year and it goes all the way into february that i still stand by that and i would love to know what your top 10 picks are for this month of march of books coming out all right smash that like button Subscribe and ring that bell for notifications, please. Let's go ahead and start with the week of March 7th with Silver Surfer by Slot and Alred Omnibus. Of course, I'm recommending this one. This is a beautiful story. If you've never read Silver Surfer, this is a great introduction to the character, his mythos, his powers, just what makes them what makes this particular character tick. I think. It, it really goes back to that era of Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, and then later on, of course, John Buscema, working on this character of Norrin Rad. But here, you get more of a story told through the, I want to call her a companion. You get to meet Dawn Greenwood, who kind of works like his companion from Doctor Who. So if you're familiar with Doctor Who, you know exactly what you're in for for this particular story but in case you're not companion is somebody that travels through time and space with the doctor and that's exactly what dawn is through her we get to experience all these adventures all of these stories and fall in love with her oh my gosh do we ever fall in love with her uh so this collects the 2014 series 1 through 15 and the 2016 series 1 through 14 in its entirety oh and there's some crazy issues in here we've done an old reader new reader on it it is a beautiful story and of course i have to recommend it batman superman world's finest now, this is more for me because sometimes i recommend myself books so i don't forget volume one the devil neza and this is the first five issues of the pretty much world's finest so it's batman and superman stories but you have mark wade yes yes oh my gosh yes and dan mora hell yes on a batman superman story i'm in dude that i cannot wait to read this i've heard so many great things about this and i really hope the series continues delivering i don't know if it's can i think it's continuing i don't know if there's going to be a volume two or three of this yet but I cannot wait. This is a hardcover. It is a standard size hardcover at 160 pages, $24.99. And I cannot wait for this book. Now, moving on to the week of March 14th, we have Marvel Masterworks, The Uncanny X-Men, Volume 15. Happens to be my birthday, and it happens to be my favorite X-Men crossover, even though it wasn't a crossover, really. And that's just a small taste of what you get in here. You get issues 220 to 231, X-Men Annual Number 11, X-Men vs. Avengers 1-4, through 4, and then material from Best of Marvel Comics. That X-Men Avengers, oh my gosh, it's so good. It was, um, it, it was Uncle Raj, Roger Stern, writing some of the best X-Men and Avengers all in one book, drawn by Mark Silvestri, issues 1-3. through three. Editors did not agree with what he wanted to do with one particular character because of the changes they made in Uncanny X-Men 200. So he left, and yeah, they did not get to finish their story. Tom Falco wraps it up, <laughs> but it, I, as a kid, I always thought, wait a minute, that's not where this was going. But this also has Fall of the Mutants. Oh, I love that story, and you have the beginning of that Mark Silvestri era on art. He becomes the monthly ongoing artist, plus Alan Davis on Annual 11, where you get that true regeneration power of Wolverine that later on, for some reason, they adapted into his real power. Uh, all right, uh, Adam Strange, Between Two Worlds, the Deluxe Edition. What a freaking surprise when I remember seeing this in the solicitation, or the catalog. Richard Br uh, Bruning, Andy Diggle, and then you have Andy Kubert, Adam Kubert, and Pascal Ferry drawing these issues. Now, Andy and Adam were working on the Adam Strange 1990 series. 
And then we fast forward to 2004, so about 14 years later, we get the Adam Strange series. And then they also collect issues of JLA 20 and 21 in here. If you're not familiar at all with the character of Adam Strange and how he travels through space, how he ends up going to the planet of Ron, this is such a great introduction to that character. Plus, it's the, the Adam Strange series 1 through 8, the one that came out in 2004, is kind of a precursor or leads directly into that Ran Thanagar War, which of course then leads into Infinite Crisis. So if you want to expand your horizon when like these cosmic characters, this is the book for you. It is $49.99, 408 pages, and it is a deluxe edition, meaning that it's taller. Like that Marvel Masterworks is a standard size hardcover, and that one, by the way, is $100, 520 pages. This one is an oversized hardcover, so it's as tall as those Omnis. And I've done videos on the different types of formats in collected editions. Oh, man. I added this one. Now, I think it's there's an understanding on my channel, or at least I say there is, that anytime there's a Berserk book, I always immediately think it goes into the top 10 no matter what. I don't say it. I don't talk about them. I think I... The first time I did it, I talked about the first volume, but it's just an understanding. With this, though, I have to just express how much love I have for this series. And this, collecting volumes 37 through 39 of the Tonka Bond, is kind of the... It's not the last of Miura before he passed, but it is the last of the fully-sized books we're going to get with Miura in it. So the Tonka Bonds are three in one... Or, I'm sorry, the Tonka Bonds were coming out... In in individual volumes since 2003 here in America by Dark Horse. Then these deluxe editions started a couple of years back. And there are three volumes per one deluxe. And damn it. This will be the last one with three volumes. The next one will probably have two volumes. I don't know what they're going to do with volume 14. I don't know if he'll have his two volumes and then maybe the new ongoing series writer or manga cough. Or if they're just going to stick it to just his volumes and then show like some original art that's never been shown before. Some artwork of Guts and... I, I don't know. But it makes me sad that this is the last one that is fully in size. All of Mura sucks. $49.99. Beautiful goodbye though. Uh, Savage Avengers by Jerry Duggan Omnibus. Now, you have artwork in here from Mike Deodato Jr. This collects Savage Avengers 0 through 28, as well as Annual Number 1, and Uncanny X-Men 190 to 191. I love that story. It is a very... that That is one of my favorite underrated X-Men stories. And this also has material from Free Comic Book Day 2019, Avengers, Savage Avengers. Now, this is a complete what-if. What if Conan the Barbarian was thrown into the modern day? Well... He would be hanging out with the Avengers. He'd be drinking with Wolverine, going out all nights with uh, Deadpool, <laughs> slaughtering bad guys with the Punisher, and kicking ass with Venom and Elektra. I, it, it's so ridiculous, but it worked. And the reason I'm suggesting it is because I don't know if Marvel's going to have a chance to reprint this just because of the whole Conan license and Robert E. Howard stuff and where it's headed or Titans now publishing those books. So I don't know if they'll be able to reprint them. That is a question I've been asked and I one that I've asked and I haven't gotten an answer yet, but when I do, I will let you all know. But just in case they aren't, this might be your one chance to get it. And I don't want anybody to miss out on this one because it is a hell of a read. This one has 776 pages and retailing for $100. Creepshow. This is another one for me. This collects the first five issues of Creepshow. You have Chris Burnham in here, Paul Dini, Steve Langford. David Lapham, Francisco Francavilla, Steve Orlando, John McCrae, like all these names working on an anthology of one of my favorite books. This is a $14.99 collecting the first five issues published by Image Comics. One of my viewers is the first one that told me about this. He's like, hey, have you read Creepshow? And I'm like, the comic based on the movie? And he was like, no, there's a new anthology, uh, Tales of Suspense and Horror. And I was like, no. But I'm in, and I cannot wait to read this. Interesting that it's coming out in March, the trade. Maybe I, I was thinking that this might be better for something like in October. But it is a new horror anthology, and the world needs more and more horror anthologies. If you watch my favorite horror books, then you know that I'm a big fan of those. 
Moon Knight, Mark Spector Omnibus Volume 1. You have Salvaluto, Chuck Dixon, Al Milgram, Carl Potts, and this was the Moon Knight that I grew up with. This is the Moon Knight that I remember just falling in love with, and mainly because there is a crossover here that had me interested in the character. Okay, so this collects Mark Spector 1 through 34. It's not really a crossover, I'm sorry. It's it's part of the Amazing Spider-Man books, but it is Amazing Spider-Man 353 to 358, and Moon Knight Divided We Fall, as well as material from Punisher Annual Number 2. This book has 100 and, or 1,064 pages, $125, and it is that Sidekicks Revenge by Al Milgram and Mark Bagley in the pages of Amazing Spider-Man 353, the Round Robin book through 358, because I was already a Spider-Man reader. I was already a uh, New Warriors reader. I read and had a lot of Punisher, but I remember, and Darkhawk was in there too, but I remember when Moon Knight showed up in that first part, I was like, who the heck is this guy? I've seen him around in a lot of other stories, but I never uh, read any of his single issues. So it had me go back and track down some of these earlier issues. Oh my gosh. It was so fun, and it's what got me into the character. Now, I know for a lot of people, it's either the Doug Mensch, Bill Sienkiewicz run, or later on, the Charlie Houston run, or the Warren Ellis run, the Jeff Lemire run, or Jeb McKay, who's kicking all kinds of ass on the book right now. But for me, it was this run. This is the 90s era of Moon Knight, and hopefully we'll get a volume two. And you all know when I say volume two, you immediately know what's going to be on the cover. That is that Stephen Platt cover. Oh my gosh, I can't wait for that. I, no announcement as of yet, but I just, I cannot, I hope this sells well enough that they give us a volume two to wrap up this series. And you throw Round Robin in there to Sidekick's Revenge? Hell yes. Plus he gets to fight. Arsenal, you get the return of Marlene. Ghost Rider makes an appearance in here. Hobgoblin. And yes, you are introduced to his sidekick, Midnight. All right. They were 11. This one comes in the last week of March by Moto Hagio. This is where 10 elite space cadets from different races across the galaxy, by the way, this is a manga published by Dempa Books, $19.95, are all on board these, this big spaceship, this decommissioned spaceship. And this is their final test. And it's pretty much a survival test. Their orders are just to survive as long as they can with what they have. And... This is where they find out that there's an 11th crew member. Hence the title, they were 11, and there were 10 of them that were supposed to be there. So one of them is not supposed to be there. I love this manga. This is one of the earliest, I guess, shoujo manga is what it was labeled back then in the 80s, early 90s. Uh, but this won all kinds of award in the late 70s. This is from 1976. So if you've not read it and you've been interested in this title, this is the latest printing of it. And again, published by Dempa Books. I strongly recommend checking it out, especially if you like those murder mysteries and the imposter type of stories. And it's just not your typical manga. Or I don't know. I don't mean typical because they've got all kinds of genres and subgenres within manga. But that one is so good. And to wrap up my recommendation, Snow Angels Library Edition. I love that book. Oh my gosh, it was so good. I finally get to talk about it when I do an overview of it. I did an overview of the trade paperbacks with a bunch of other trades from Dark Horse Comics. But Jeff Lemire and Jock kill it in this. And it's got both volume one of the trade paperbacks and it is now in a big deluxe library edition hardcover. So it's all about... This father and his three daughter, or two daughters rather, and they're living in the trench. They're known as the trench folk, and there are three rules to living in this trench. You must never leave the trench. The trench provides, and the trench, is it never ends, I think? Or endless, one of those. And that's it. Oh, it was so good. I believe it was a digital comic, and then they put it in trade paperback, and now it's coming out in a library edition, and I cannot wait to see Jock's artwork in this big, beautiful library edition. It is so good it's um oh my gosh what were the daughter's names i think they were was it my neighbor totoro's the way that i remembered may is one of them <sighs> may, may, Sas, not Sas, sasuke uh millie millie that was it but if you've not read it you are in for a treat especially if you're waiting for those big books now if you're interested in any of these books when they come out check out our sponsors if you're in europe and you're interested in buying these books definitely check out walt's comic shop in berlin germany 
They have the cheapest pre-order prices, flat shipping rate of 12 euros for all EU countries, emails answer within 24 hours, waltzcomicshop.com, and you can use the code near mint condition at checkout and get free shipping for all EU countries with your first order over 40 euros. That's Waltz Comic Shop, your reliable source for omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. Ding! CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first-time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was my list of top 10 essential reads for the month of March of 2023. Let me know what you would have on your list, your top five, your top three that you're definitely getting, you're definitely reading, or if any of the books I've recommended on this list pique your interest. If you have any questions, leave your questions down below, smash that like button. Thank you to our patrons for making videos like this possible. Everyone stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.